In this lesson, we will examine bitwise operators, or ways to manipulate binary numbers. Let's start by creating a new console project. Bitwise and we're ready to start. Now to make this easier I'm going to start out with a function that will display our numbers in both binary and decimal so we can see what's going on. bit set and for that we need the bit set library and we will also need the string library simply going to pass that value into my bit set and my bit set will do the work of converting it into a displayable binary string. So we'll display the bit set as binary first of all and then in parentheses we will display the decimal. to long method and that will do all the display we need it to do. So in our main function let's have three numbers. My number 15 and call the others value A and value B and the reason will become clear in just a moment. I'm picking those values somewhat arbitrarily. I'm just going to perform binary operations on them. So let's just test our function first of all. And you can see all I'm going to do is pass these two things into display. It's going to display the message and it's going to display the binary number. And we'll put an extra line break in. So let's build this. We have an error message. Let's see if we can figure out why. Oh, two parentheses. There we are. So let's run that. And we can see we get four zeros and four ones which is the binary representation of 15 and it shows us 15 in decimal. So we're good. So if we run that, we can see shifted left one place. Well, we've actually shifted the whole thing there. So let's just correct that so we have good alignment and we'll be able to see exactly what that operation has done. Okay, everything's lined up so we can clearly see that these four bits have now all moved one place to the left, as you might expect with a bitwise shift to the left. Now, interestingly enough, when you shift bits to the left like that, you double the value in decimal. That's one way CPUs do multiplication by shifting things to the left, and similarly division by shifting things to the right. So let's go ahead and shift things to the right as well. I'm going to copy this, paste for speed. We're going to shift to the right, as you might expect. That's the right shift. But we're going to shift to the right two places. Now, you can do a shorthand when you're assigning back to the original variable. We can delete that, and we can do similar to the plus equal shorthand. It just saves a bit of typing. basically means shift this, val shift this value this many places to the left and assign the result back into this value. Conversely, shift this value this many places to the right and assign the result back into this value. 
So let's run that. Let's build that. Let's run that. And again, we've uh, changed our spacing. So let's fix that. Run it again. You can see we've shifted to the right two places. See all these bits have moved over, but we've lost one. It's overflowed to the right there. So we didn't get a perfect division by two or by four because we shifted twice. 30 divided by four is 7.5. We of course lost the fraction because a binary number is only whole numbers. But you can see there that shifting to the left doubles for each place you shift. Shifting to the right halves for each place you shift. Now let's take a look at the bitwise knot. And the symbol for the bitwise knot is simply the tilde. That squiggly line at the top left of the keyboard. Uh, a lot of people don't know what it's for. One of its uses is as a bitwise knot in C++. And rather than change my number this time, I'm just going to pass the bitwise knotted value into our function. And let's add a few line breaks so that we can see the difference. Let's build. And if we run that, we can see the bitwise knot takes the value that we had before and simply flips the bits. Where we had a one, we get a zero. Where we have a zero, we get a one. And it's an exact flip, one bit at a time, all the way up the line, and we get quite a different number. And let's run it. And we can see here our first number, our second number. And if we compare the two bits in each column, we can see if we have a zero or a one, we get a one. 0 or a 1, we get a 1. 1 or 0, we get a 1. 1 or a 1 gives us a 1. All these zeros give us a 0. A 0 or 1 gives us a 1. So we get quite a different value. Now it's not an addition, it's not a subtraction, it's not a multiplication or any other standard arithmetic. It is, in fact, a bitwise OR. Next, we'll look at the logical AND. Let me just clean that up a little bit first. I'll do a copy and paste for speed. Use the same numbers, but this time I'll have an AND result. And the symbol for the bitwise AND is the ampersand. Now again, don't confuse it with the Boolean or logical test operator, which means if this is true and this is true, then the result of both is true. That's very different from a bitwise AND. So let's build that. And if we run that, we can see our logical AND. 0 and 1. Well, for an AND, both of them must be 1 or you get a 0. So if you look all the way down the line, the only time we get a 1 in our result is when both bits of our inputs are 1. So again, we get quite a different value. It's not arithmetic. It's a bitwise AND. And these inputs give us the output consistent with the truth table for the bitwise AND. Now let's also look at the exclusive OR. But abbreviated to XOR. And the symbol for exclusive OR is the circumflex. The little hat symbol on the number six key. Let's go ahead and build that. Let's run it out. And we could see our XOR result matches what we would see in a truth table. 0 and 1 is a 1. 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is a 0. In an exclusive OR, exactly one of the bits must be 1 for the result to be a 1. Two 1s will give you a 0. Two zeros will give you a 0. 
only a zero and a one, or a one or a zero will give you a one. And that's all there is to the exclusive or operator.